Awesome. So welcome to 2.1. We're going to go through together the types of Instagram accounts that you can either create or that you already have and don't really know about. And this is really, really important because each different type of Instagram account has benefits and it has its downsides. And I'm going to make sure that you're choosing the benefits that's right for your business. So whether that's get as many followers as possible or make as much money as possible, that's for you to decide based on the knowledge inside this lecture. So let's jump in. So there are three and a half distinct types of Instagram accounts that you can start. I say three and a half because it's basically three, but the half, as we're about to go through together, is going to be the little hack that we can use in order to get the best out of, or the most out of Instagram, meaning we can take more than one of these account types and use it to our advantage so we're getting the best out of each account type without really having any downside. I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do that for your business. So the three and a half account types are one, a personality Instagram account, two, a brand or business Instagram account, three, a themed account, and 3.5 is the hybrid account. So let's jump into some examples of what each one of these are. So a personality account means that you are the face and the focus. It's built up around you and it's built up around your personality or someone, someone's face and someone's personality, if not yours. So you can see Luka Doncic is a NBA player. He plays uh, basketball at a professional level and people follow his Instagram account to get updates from him specifically and to see his personality, to see his face and to see what he's doing day to day. Nikki French, I'm not 100% sure who she is, but uh, she has a personality account. So if she's an actress or if she's a model, uh, she'll be posting um, content about herself, about Nikki French, about what she's doing that day, about the project she's working on, and people follow her for that reason. A brand account is your brand and your products are the face and the focus. So you can see uh, a very easy way to distinguish between the two are the types of uh, photos that they have. You can see these two brand photos are both logos where the personality accounts were both um, people's faces. And we're going to get into the more detailed stuff in just a second, but I want to give you a broad overview first. So your brand and your products are the face and the focus inside a brand or business account. And your content type is obviously going to be around your niche. So if it's Nike, it's going to be around sport. It's going to be around the brand of Nike and the clothing that they wear, the product, uh, the shoes maybe. And it's going to be specifically in your niche, your brand, and your product. Audi, they're going to be around the automotive industry. It's going to be talking about cars. It's going to be talking about their technology in their cars. It's going to be talking about um, people who drive their cars. It's going to be very focused inside that brand and inside that business. The third type of account is the themed account. So... An overall consistent theme is the focus. So the content type, again, is going to be um, consistent with that. It's going to be either in a theme or a trend. So here are a couple of examples of that. One uh, is travel and leisure. So travel and leisure could be an Instagram that is themed around just travel and themed around holidays and destinations that people want to go. It's not specifically a business. It's not specifically a personal account, but it's actually around a theme that people like, so such as holidaying or traveling. Cats of Instagram is another good one. This theme is not a business, you know, cats aren't a business, it's not run by a business in the cat industry, but it is around something that is very uh, well liked. A lot of people want to see that sort of stuff, they want to see their cats on their Instagram, they want to see cute cats, and uh, their content type is going to be specifically around cats, and maybe they're going to branch out into other animals, but that is a themed account. Now, a hybrid account, which is very important, is a blend of any of the previous three accounts, which means you can see uh, you have Lewis Howes here, who is a great example of this, and we're going to show you exactly why, um, and we're going to show you sort of the content that they post and what, what makes them a hybrid account. But Lewis Howes posts a lot of viral content, a lot of quotes, he posts a lot about him, he posts a lot about his products, and he's blended the three of these accounts together in order to create an account that takes the best out of all of these worlds. And we're going to take, um, we're going to have a look at what are the best out of each of these worlds in just a second. You can see my luxury freedom formula brand is a business account at heart, but I'm posting viral content. I'm posting personal content in order to have people trust me and like me 
and come through and buy, be more likely to find my account and buy my products because I'm using the hybrid strategy where I'm mixing a, a uh, mixture of the three account types. So in order for you to really know what's at the core of your account, because we're going to make sure that you're building a hybrid account. And if you don't want to buy, build a hybrid account, then this is, uh, then you need to choose what sort of account you are. But I'm going to show you why you want to build a hybrid account and why it'd be silly to build anything but that. And you still need a core of your account. So Lewis Howes at a core is a personality account. My account at a core is a business account. You can have cats of Instagram and you can start to build a business around that. But at its core, it would be a themed account. So in order to choose what is at the core of your Instagram account, you really need to know what is the value of an Instagram account? What makes your Instagram account uh, valuable? So what actually determines the value of your Instagram account is literally correlated to the amount of money that you can make from that account. So we're gonna jump into this in a whole new module, but we have to introduce that here because if this is the foundation of your account, you need to know what the end purpose, the reason why you have an Instagram account, the value that you are wanting to create with that you need to make sure you're clear on that. So you can put that into every step of the way, every building block we put into your Instagram account has that in mind. So whether you sell products, maybe you're creating your own brand and you're selling your own clothing or you're selling your own services, uh, but you've created a product and you're selling that. That's a way that you can make money from the account. Whether you're selling advertising space, if you're building up an account like a themed account, like the cats of Instagram, someone can come in and say, hey, I'll give you $5,000 to post about my account. And therefore, you're selling that advertising space on your account to the audience that you built up. And that's another way that you can monetize your account. Or you could be doing affiliating. So instead of someone saying, hey, I'll give you five grand to post this about my account, they might say, if you promote my uh, car brand, say I'm Audi, and you sell a car, I'll give you 50% of our profits. You may, may be making two to $3,000 per car that you sell to your list, and that's called affiliating. So selling someone else's products or services for a commission. So what actually determines how much money you can make from an Instagram account? Doesn't matter which one of these ways that you're actually uh, making the money, there's three factors that determine exactly how much money your Instagram is worth, what is the value of your Instagram account? and that is followers. How many followers do you have following your Instagram? The reach, how many of those followers actually see your content? It's very important. You can have 100 million followers, but if only 500 people see your content at any point in time, you're not actually worth that much money, you're not actually that valuable. And affinity, so how strong is the relationship with your followers? Meaning how many of these followers are gonna take action and follow your advice? when you try to sell them something or when you promote something to them. It's called the affinity, which is very, very important. So a quick example of this is uh, there's three accounts, three Instagram accounts down the side on the left. So you've got Instagram account A, B, and C. And each account is gonna try and sell this $10, looks like a corn cob or a bowl of corn in a cloud shirt for $10. This is the promotional product. Um, that they're going to try and sell to their Instagram account. And the first account has a million followers, A. And their reach is 10%, which is pretty good. It's pretty standard if you could reach 10% of your audience every time you post. So they put out a post selling this t-shirt and it reaches 100,000 people and their affinity. So the relationship strength with their followers is quite low. It's actually at 0.2%. And if 100,000 people see it, and 0.2% of people purchase, they've made 200 purchases of this shirt, which is $2,000. Now account B have the same amount of followers, but they have an increased reach. So their post actually has 20% reach and it reaches 200,000 people. Now inside this course, we're gonna teach you how to increase not only your followers, but your reach and your affinity, because we want you to build a very high valuable uh, Instagram account. So. 200,000 people see this post and their affinity is also much higher. They've used the strategies inside this course to build a strong relationship and a strong affinity with their audience. And instead of 0.2% of people, 1% of people actually purchase, which is actually still pretty low, 1% affinity, which means they've made 2,000 purchases, 2,000 sales at $10, which is $20,000. So they've sold 
10 times more. They've made 10 times more profit by just making sure they're not just focused on followers, but also reach and affinity. And we can do this through um, account types, making sure your account is the right type, is the right type of hybrid, and you can increase your reach and affinity using these account types. Uh, because the third one is a really good example, especially if you're a beginner or you're just starting to grow your account. You can see you don't actually need to have that many followers if you are got a high reach and high affinity with your audience. So if you have 50,000 followers on Instagram and you reach 10%, it's the same as account A, um, and 10% is pretty standard, pretty low reach, and 50,000, you know, pretty low amount of followers. It doesn't have to be a million followers. So you're only reaching 5,000 people. 5,000 people see it. But if you've worked really hard on affinity, which you can do through building a hybrid account, you can actually get an affinity up to 10%. And so for this example, we have used 7%, which means we'd have 350 purchases and we'd make $3,500 from selling this one t-shirt in one of our posts, which means we've actually outperformed the account with a million followers. So this is why it's important to make sure we choose the right account type for us. Now, here are the four or the three and a half account types. And here is how they rate in each of the important categories on uh, what is a valuable Instagram account. Because of course, the purpose of your Instagram account is to create value in one way or another. So whether you want to create a lot of followers, you may want to go with just a themed account. Themed account has quite viral content if you're just posting about cats, or you're just posting about holidays, or you're just posting about World of Warcraft, or whatever it is that your theme is. If it's already popular, you're going to get very naturally, very organically, a lot of people liking your content and following you. You're also going to have a high reach because you're going to be able to post a very uh, viral sort of content that people are very naturally drawn to. The problem is your affinity is going to be low. So we're looking at three, the themed account column, because you don't really have a strong relationship with a themed account that you follow. If you follow holiday destinations, you're not really feeling, you don't get the behind the scenes on who that person is. You have no idea who you're talking to, who you're following. You're just following it for the content. However, if you were to be following a brand, you'd have a very strong affinity. The only reason you follow a branded account if you follow Nike is because you've chosen, chosen to actually like Nike. And your affinity is going to be much higher, your relationship with them. If Nike posts a promotional post trying to sell one of their products, you're much more likely to buy than if the themed account tried to sell you a holiday. And the, the downside to the brand account, however, is lower followers. You're going to have a lot less people being like, oh, yes, I love this business compared to, oh, yes, I love cats follow. So you're going to have lower followers and lower reach because the content that you post around your brand is going to not be as viral as the themed. The personal account type. It's going to be somewhere in the middle. You're going to have a high affinity because it's going to be people following you for you. You're the face and the brand. You're the face of your um, account. Your reach is going to be pretty high, but it's not going to be as viral as the themed account, but it's going to be more viral than the actual brand account where you're posting about products and services and around your niche. And of course, your followers is going to be a little bit higher than brand because people like to see people's faces. They like to follow people more than they do businesses, but it's not going to be anywhere near as high as if you're following a bunch of cats having fun. So the hybrid account, of course, we'll get into in a second. I'll show you the numbers of that. But what you need to do is you need to choose your account type. So whether you choose your face as, the, as your personal, uh, which means your face is the actual Instagram account and it's around, about you, whether you choose brand, whether it's a business or a, a brand that you're starting or that you have, and that's at the core of your Instagram account, or whether you choose themed and you can make an account really viral and then try to monetize it from there, you need to make sure that you're choosing some one of these three account types at the core of your Instagram account. So choose your type now. And with that in mind, we then have to look at hybrid accounts. So I wanna make sure that even though you've chosen, say you've chosen the brand account, you wanna make sure that you are taking into account that you can make that a hybrid account and not only increase your followers and reach, but you can maintain that high affinity with your actual followers. So hybrid is taking the best of all the accounts and moving them, merging them into one for you. So your account should be a hybrid account and we're going to talk to you about exactly what that means and the type of content that you can put on your account with the 
mindset of it being a hybrid account because he was a great example. And if you don't follow him already, go follow Tony Robbins. He has one of the best hybrid accounts that I've seen. He's a business account. He's a business, but his face is the um, is the face of his Instagram account. So he's also got the he's uh, he's also got the elements of a personal account in here where his face is on the stories, his personality is on the stories, all the content's about him, but he also posts quotes. He posts viral quotes that's shareable. He posts inspirational stories that are very shareable and themed, and he sells directly to his uh, consumers. He sells products using these posts, and he's the perfect example of a, of a hybrid account with millions of followers that is really, really effective in making the best of all three things that make your account, all three factors that make your account valuable. So he has an insanely valuable account because of it. Now, one last thing I want to talk to you about. Um, if you couldn't quite decide on your account, that's okay. I want to show you this one little hack. Uh, it's called a parallel account. And I've thrown this in as a bonus because I've done it and I've got a lot of uh, benefit from it. But basically, you can create what's called a parallel account, meaning a business account. Or a pa sorry, the, the account on the right, Curtis Stone, he's a chef in Australia. So he's a blend of a personal account and a business because not only is he the face of it, but he does sell a lot of products um, on his account. So he has high affinity because he's the face of it, but he has lower followers and reach because the content that he posts is around his business, is around his cooking, it's around him as a person, and it's not as viral as the account on the left, which is proper tasty. They have a very high follower and reach account because they post viral recipes. They break down recipes into 15, 30 seconds and they make delicious chocolatey looking things that everyone shares and tags everybody in. However, they would find it a lot harder to actually sell something because their affinity is lower because they're just a themed account. So what you can actually do is you can run these in parallel with each other. For example, if I'm Curtis Stone and I'm running a business and I have a high affinity and I sell products through this business, I'd have an account exactly like Curtis Stone's account on the right. But if I wanted to drive extra traffic into that account because I can't actually post viral content on there, I could take a new account and run two accounts in parallel with each other. And on the first account, I would be posting viral recipes such as Proper Tasty, and I would be promoting, and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do that inside this Instagram course, my business account with my viral and themed account. That's another way that you can create a hybrid account is you can split them and promote between them. But for me, I chose to actually put them all in the one account to create one hybrid account um, like Tony Robbins. And I'm gonna show you how to do the same and get the best out of all accounts.